Hi, I'm Isaac. And I'm Lulu. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the transcript. transcript. This week, the transcript crew analyzes the protests at Smith this month. Hits a home run with the baseball team. Gets a reality check at the reality fair. And learns about what goes into a good promposal. Howdy, I'm Mikey Diaz. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un met with Russian President Vladimir Putin yesterday for their first summit. Kim on Wednesday said he hoped that he and Putin could discuss concrete questions about peace negotiations on the Korean Peninsula. Putin confirmed that this issue was discussed. In addition, he said Kim wants to denuclearize, but he needs security guarantees before he can do so. Former Vice President Joe Biden announced in a video yesterday that he's making a third run for president. Unlike in 1988 and 2008, however, he starts out as a frontrunner in a diverse field of about 20 other Democrats. The NSA has recommended the White House drop the controversial phone surveillance program that was secretly launched during George W. Bush's administration following the 9-11 attacks. The program, which collects data on U.S. phone calls and text messages, was started without a court order and its existence wasn't known until former intelligence contractor Edward Snowden leaked information to journalists about it in 2013. If the White House follows the NSA's recommendation, the program's legal authority will expire in December. Thanks for watching. Hello. Today in Profiles in Excellence with Charlie Reed, we will be looking at technology teacher Jeremy Whalen. Recently, Jeremy won a Pioneer Valley Excellence in Teaching Award for his excellent teaching. I sat down with some people who really know him and asked them what makes him so excellent. I think Jeremy Whalen is the perfect candidate for it. His kids learn a lot. His kids work hard in his class. It's really important that we give it to a visual arts teacher because by the year 2025, about 35% of the jobs will be in visual arts. Um, I have videography with him, and it's always so fun. We're doing projects left and right. He pretty much lets you do whatever you want. Well, one of the problems with that we saw when we were putting this all together, and this is funny, he's actually 19 years old. That was a problem for us. It was a pretty big problem for us because why should we be giving a prestigious award to somebody who isn't even old enough to buy beer at a restaurant? He's 19 going on 18. He's not a big 19, he's a little 19. We didn't really like the idea of giving him an award for something that should be going towards, you know, grown professionals. You know, the thing with Jeremy that I really thought was special is he really knows the mind of a student in and out. He, when he comes into class, he's like, hey, are you okay? You look kind of tired. And I can tell you're hungry. Want a Slim Jim? That's right. I forgot to mention, he has Slim Jims in his pocket. They're a bit warm, but it's like a real sausage. You know what I'm saying? You know, he's always been a great dad to me. Um, you know, most of my birthdays, he's gotten me a present. Um, sometimes I get to ride in the trunk of his van. That's pretty excellent. <laughs> Personally, I feel, what's age? It's just a number, right? We got into a few battles in the room. We we're tossing ideas out. There was a bottle of water tossed at one point. I mean, they, they got pretty hot and contested. But ultimately, it comes down to the same thing it always needs to come down to in an award like this. How's his mustache? His mustache is fantastic. If he didn't have the mustache, there is no way that a 19-year-old could get an award like this. It was the mustache. There's a lot of talk about Jeremy in the halls. He's so cool. He's so chill. He got a cool mustache. But like... I heard this one story, I don't know if I believe it. He joined a basketball team full of 12 year olds. I don't know if you heard this one. And he would knock them over, start yelling at them, screaming at them. I think he gave one kid a concussion just by screaming in his ear. But that's just rumors, of course, I don't believe it. Hey Jeremy, I, uh, I met your daughter. My daughter? Yeah, your daughter, I met your daughter. I hope I don't have a daughter. I mean, I, I, I love him so much. He's like such a great dad. Um, one thing that doesn't make him excellent, uh, sometimes when he gets to school, 
Northampton High School. I, I go here too. He pretends like he doesn't have a daughter or any child for that matter. That kind of, that's not very excellent. Hi, I'm Amelia Tamayo, and this right here is the car lock on the back seat of a car. Let's find out how it can save your life. A few weeks ago, a college student in South Carolina was killed by a fake Uber driver. When she entered the vehicle, she was unable to escape because these car door locks were activated. Now, anytime you hire a rideshare service like Uber or Lyft, there's a few things I want you to do. First is, I want you to wait inside. This makes it harder so that a potential predator could target you as a potential victim. Second, I want you to ask questions. What does this mean? I want you to stand this far away from a driver's window and ask a few questions such as, what is your name, which you can verify in your app, who are you looking to pick up, and where are you taking this person? This way you can verify that they're not a fake driver and you can be safe. If any of this information turns out to be false, I want you to run away to safety immediately. In other news, Over break, you may have noticed countless flyers and sidewalk chalk on the Smith College campus. These have been the culmination of Smith students' protests against decades of unaddressed demands advocating for their rights of undocumented, transgender, disabled, and many other groups of students. To understand their perspective, we went down to Thursday's protest and spoke with student organizers and participants. Why am I out here today? Um, I think as a marginalized student, I, I definitely felt like a need to be out here today just because like existing in a space like Smith, which is a predominantly white institution, can be really difficult on a day-to-day -day basis. So I felt like I, I had to be here for myself, but I also had to be here to support undocumented students and other marginalized students because the way Smith kind of like ignores our needs and has been ignoring our needs since like 1968 is kind of like... We can't stand for it anymore, especially because they have enough money to do something about it. President Kathleen McCartney of Smith College declined to interview, but she issued an open letter to the community stating that, I join so many members of our community in thanking you for your advocacy on behalf of those who do not feel a sense of belonging at Smith. There are many competing demands for resources at Smith. Members of our community have big hopes and dreams, such as more financial aid, new facilities, and new staff positions. As always, any new initiatives would require repurposing existing resources or raising funds. Accordingly, I will be seeking input from students to help me prioritize inclusion initiatives. Like many of you, I came to the inclusion conference as a learner and a listener, seeking to deepen my understanding of what this community needs. Sincerely, Kathleen McCartney, President. Thanks for watching, and remember, your safety is everything. I'm Amelia Tamayo, and this has been In Other News. Bye! Hi, I'm Lulu. <laughs> Welcome to Hamped Up. Y'all ready for this? Spring is here, and warm weather is upon us, which makes watching long baseball games just a little bit more enjoyable. Although occasionally filled with negative connotation about the length and pace of the sport, many players, parents, and coaches are excited about this upcoming baseball season. Only one freshman made the varsity squad this year, so I checked in with Dominic Bannerini to learn about his style of play and a little bit more about him. I thought like I had fewer expectations because like coming in as like a freshman, you aren't really like expected much. Mentally, when I'm pitching, like if runners are on, I just kind of try to like keep them close to the base, and other than that, just kind of like throw strikes. I'm definitely just that like I get to be with the older kids and around like kids that have been in the program for a lot of years and I get to like play with them and practice with them every day so like that's pretty rewarding and I just get like like really good coaches to help me like coach Baldwin told me just kind of have to be like strong mentally and just like trust everyone else on the team because I just need to throw strikes and they'll get to get out. I also checked in with recent Hall of Fame inductee and history teacher Mark Baldwin to acquire knowledge about his coaching style and career. I've been coaching baseball here at Northampton High School 23 years. This is my 21st varsity season. Inexperience would describe how this season's gone. Um, we have a lot of new players. We have some talent, but they're new to the varsity level and they're getting used to the speed and quickness and it's just a little bit different game. 
um, at the varsity level. Well, we're off to a worse start than in past seasons, not from lack of effort or lack of talent, but again, it's all new, and so kids are getting making the adjustment to um, a different level of competition than they're used to. So we'll get there. We're not there yet. I mean, it was an honor to be with um, lots of other folks who have done kind of great things, and. Uh, and it was a happy moment. The baseball team looks to take down the Terriers tomorrow in West Springfield at 4 p.m. In other sports news, softball is away at Pittsfield at 4.30, girls lacrosse is away at Minnetonka at 4, boys tennis is at Amherst at 4, and girls tennis is home against Ludlow at 4. Girls Ultimate has a tournament all day tomorrow at NMH, and boys lacrosse is home against Pope Francis at 4 p.m. Thanks for watching Hefted Up. I'm Lulu Kesson. Hi, I'm Alexa. This past Tuesday was NHS's reality fair. The purpose of this fair is to show students what real life experiences are like. We talked with Mr. Russell to understand a bit more about what the reality fair was. The purpose of the reality fair for students every year that I've been involved here at NHS is to learn about aspects of business from the uh, financial side to the business operation side to the customer side and there are probably 15 to 20 booths uh, when you look around the gym and they're staffed by people who have uh, games activities information uh, to enable uh, students from NHS other uh, junior class students from NHS to learn what I'm most impressed by is the organization uh, and uh, the, the, the people who are involved in all the booths really knowing what they're about and trying to share that information with our junior class. To better understand what the reality fair is, we spoke to some students here at NHS. As someone who has a job, in addition to being a student, I felt like the reality fair wasn't incredibly accurate as some of the jobs were paying what our minimum wage is in mass right now. So like, for instance, a journalist is, makes like 12.75 an hour, which I'm not sure is like true or not to real life, but that's mass's minimum wage. So it was a little bit hard to like wrap your head around things like, why am I going to school to make more money? Why am I getting this loan if I'm already gonna be poor with a minimum wage job in Massachusetts? And so some of those specifics that I felt like were really important and necessary were lacking. Thanks for watching. Make sure to tune into The Leftovers next week. Hi, I'm Kaylee Hunter Gasparini, and welcome back to Tell It Like It Is. Prom is less than a month away, and proposals have been popping up all around the school. According to the Washington Post, proposals have existed since as early as 2001, and their popularity has only grown since then. However, with the rise of bigger and better proposals, also has there been strong opinions against them, finding them cheesy or dumb. I wanted to learn what students at NHS felt about them. Are they cheesy or cute? Well, I find proposals to be cheesy. They're incredibly cheesy, but the cheesier they are, the better they tend to be. Okay, I think they are, um, I think they're cute. Proposals are both cheesy and cute. Like, I guess the cheesiness is what makes it cute. And then what's cute is that it's cheesy. I think it's cute. <laughs> oh, I think it's cute. Yeah. I love promposals. I'd find it, it very cute. Please done. prompose to me. I think they're cute. Um, Margot proposed to me and I thought it was very cute. <laughs> like, if someone's doing it in song, then I right. would love it. If you're on the same like page about it, I think they can yeah. be really cute. A poem, a poem, a puzzle, po a treasure map, that would be fun. These are good ideas for the audience. <laughs> I met with Kaylin Young, Vice President of the Senior Class, to learn about the prom committee's plans for prom and what she thinks about prom puzzles. So I definitely think like if you're doing it in good spirit and you're having fun with it, it can be really cute. <laughs> it's an exciting event. And it can be really cute and fun to get dressed up with your friends. And I really like that. And I like going for the food and like having a fun time. Um, kind of appeasing the, the grade and the class and everything. Um, at the same time as like juggling all the different little moving parts that happen. You know, working with Log Cabin to get the best deals and um, 
figuring out what is the most inclusive for students is um, the majority of what we've been trying to focus on. Prom tickets are starting to sell today. They will be on sale for a limited amount of time. It is $40 for seniors, $50 for non-seniors. Um, you are invited to bring guests if you are a senior as long as you speak with administration and fill out the proper forms. Um, and we'll be doing that right out in front of the office. If you're planning on asking someone to prom, you should get a move on as it's coming up quick. Shoot your shot and happy Friday. Thanks for watching. There are only a handful of weeks left of this season of the transcript, so if there are any stories you want covered, let a member of the transcript know. Come support the Northamptons tonight at the Jam for Bread Mana Soup Kitchen Benefit Concert at 7 p.m. at Edwards Church. <laughs> <laughs>